I understand. But I don't know right off where we're going to find the boat fast enough to catch it. I got it. You call my brother-in-law, Billy Bob. He's got the fastest boat in the whole damn river. <laughs> Billy Bob sure no fix the ass. Ah, here, go, Billy Bob. Hello, everybody. Excuse me if I look tired. It's early in the morning. And I drove 600 miles yesterday to get the new project. So, welcome to the speedboat restoration part one. So, what have we got here? I will show you. You guess what it is? It's from the 70s and it is one of these. It is a 1970s Glastron GT50, 150 sorry, made famous by the film Live and Let Die, in which Roger Moore, or the stunt actor, famously did the longest ever speedboat jump. Very cool boat chase scene. These were one of the most mass produced boats in America, I believe. They made, I think probably thousands of them. In the UK, not so much. This is probably built under licence by Roger Clark Marine, and that's Roger Clark, the famous world champion rally driver. And they made small numbers. It could be um, one of the studio boats for Pinewood Studios made by Norman Fletcher. We won't know till we get underneath. If we find a little Fletcher plaque somewhere, then... It could be a real piece of James Bond history, but I doubt it. Very dirty. A um, few gel repairs to do underneath. Up in the middle. So the plans for this are full restoration. So the floors in these go rotten. Somebody's uh, done a sort of repair. So we'll dig that out and see what's lurking underneath. I mean, that's fine. The guy who had this was just going to put a little outboard on it and was just going to put some vinyl over that. And if you've only got a few horsepower, there's no problem in doing that. But I want to rip it out, um, fiberglass and new floor stringers and transom. So to do that, we're going to be splitting the hull and the deck, uh, digging out what's inside, which is not going to be fun. And then... Um, Fiberglassing it all in new, probably putting in some extra strength and maybe make it foam filled so it's sandwich construction. It's going to have a, probably a 140 horsepower Tower of Power, which is from 1972. I believe the boat's also 1972, so that should match nicely. I'm not going to prop it to do crazy speeds, apparently these get sketchy after about 45 miles an hour, so we'll keep that as a limit. The gel coat isn't perfect, it has got star cracking in quite a few places. The only real way to get rid of that would be to um, actually paint it. I don't want to paint it, this boat's 50 years old and it doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to do gel repairs where I can on the white, certainly quite a lot underneath, just to make it structurally sound and watertight and we'll probably just give it a polish and see how it comes out. In this episode, we'll do a pressure washing. Um, I'll just put some dish soap on. I don't want anything waxy on it if I've got to do gel repairs later. And, oh, sorry, baby's crying. I have to sort that out in a second. And we'll do a high speed, uh, sped up pressure washing video because they're quite satisfying and We'll rip out that plywood and see what's lurking underneath. Didn't pay very much for it. It actually was almost free with a couple of outboards that are lurking in here. I'll dig them out and show you those. I want to do a little video of those running just so I can sell them and hopefully make my money back. So first of all, let's get the outboards out and see if we can get them running. So this is the Evinrood Fast Twin for sale. It's 18 horsepower. I believe it's 1974. 
it comes with a new 2018 fuel line it has an issue that the there's a crack in this plastic fitting so it needs a new one of those and I can't can't pump up the bulb because of it but I can get enough fuel in the carbs just to get it firing over I don't want to run it too long anyway because um, I haven't got it in any water don't know about the water pump impeller um, it all looks very well maintained uh, no real corrosion so I'm guessing it's just had fresh water use but very cool looking retro outboard so I'll just um, get it to fire just to show that it's got spark and compression and everything else and it is a runner this is the other little outboard it came with again I think probably late 70s don't really have a clue um, I can't get it to run I'm not gonna put any time or effort into it I'm just going to stick it on eBay as an on-runner, but cool little thing. Johnson Seahorse 4 horsepower. I mean, a lot of you are probably saying that I should probably use that little Evan Rude, but Johnson and Evan Rude, meh, too reliable. I want some nice Mercury breakdowns, so no, eBay. So before cleaning, and here's the after shot. So looks much better already. Still by no means perfect. Uh, I'm really keen to get the buffing wheel out and start polishing away because I think it's going to come up pretty good. Um, but. I do not want to get any waxy coating on any of it because there's quite a few gel repairs I've got to do. So the polish is going to be the last thing to be done on this boat. So I think next up we start ripping out that floor and uh, see what monstrosities of a rock we have underneath, which I'm sure we will. Got all favourite.
So the floor is sort of intact. I'm not gonna stand on that. Yeah, the, uh, oh, that's still wet. The fiberglass is still intact. But the um, plywood underneath it is mush. No central stringer. Oh, baby's crying. I've got to go and deal with that. Then I'll come back to you. So that's all of those bits of plywood out. There's a transfer stringer. Or what's left of it? Or no, maybe what's left of the floor underneath of it. I don't know, sorry about my camera work. Not too dark. It doesn't look so rotten, but I'm going to rip it all out anyway. And the transom. Again, doesn't look bad, but behind that fiberglass, I'm sure it's soft, at least in places, if not all of it. So it's all got to come out. So yeah, the wooden floor sort of goes around there. Up underneath the bow, and it's all got to come out. I don't know if you can see, but it's all soft underneath it. It's taking my weight, but I'm gonna be putting a powerful outboard on this, so yeah, it all wants to be done. I'm not gonna rip it out now because as you can see on my shoe, all this silicon goo I thought it was sick of flex, just silicon, I think bathroom sealant because um, it was so thick it hasn't actually dried out so I'm going to let that dry out before I start digging it out but yes as suspected all rotten um, I'll probably do it a little bit differently I'll just um, maybe put it through a scantling calculator and see what it needs to be probably just do it by guesswork but it might do a few more stringers than the uh, standard boat had. And um, foam fillet as well, not with this dodgy builder's foam, with proper closed cell polyurethane marine foam. My brother-in-law, Billy Bob, he's got the fiercest boat on the whole goddamn river. Billy Bob will get him, you'll see. I apologise to anybody in the US with my uh, sheriff's accent there. What a cool thing. A lot of work to do. Next up, next episode, we shall be splitting the hull and deck. Um, probably dig out what's inside of it. I don't know whether to do the gel repairs on the hull before I put the stringers in. Probably so it's lighter and easier to flip over. So we dig it out, turn the hull over. So this... This is the join seam, so we've got to take that strip off and lift the top half off the bottom half. Then I can flip the bottom over, do the various gel repairs along the um, centre line. It's quite quite damaged and chipped, so we'll sort all that out, give it a polish underneath, and. Yeah, that's probably what we'll do next episode. Maybe get a start on doing the floors. I don't know what I use for stringers. There's lots of back and forth between people what they, what you should use. I have got a load of um, teak, but it splits quite easily and it's heavy. Um, cedar's good. Uh, larch is quite good. Both sort of water repellent woods. Uh, I'll probably just use marine ply because it's easy to get hold of and it's got good uniform strength. Once it's cap encapsulated and fiberglass, it's fine. So yes, speedboat restoration part one. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, it's a big help for me. And uh, see you later. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye bye.